Hello and welcome to the Bind King stock market Q&A live stream. We do this exclusively on my Discord and I only answer questions that are asked by my Discord members. So if you want to join that Discord, be sure to click the link in the description to join my Discord group. I was asked to look into Lancadia because they're doing a merger with Golden Nugget Online Gaming. I, I guess there's a lot of interest in this stock, so I'm going to take a look at it. So first off, this is a company with a $500 million market cap, and it's essentially just a holding company. It's another SPAC stock, so I actually made a list of bullet points that I want to hit on for this. And thanks to Positive Investing on YouTube, he helped me understand this merger a little bit more and help me get some more data points on what I'm going to be talking about today. So first and foremost, I don't want to be covering a whole lot more spec plays or SPAC plays because that's not what I'm really here to do. I'm a value investor, guys. A lot of you know that. So I don't want a whole lot of people to be getting hurt on these short term plays or taking advantage of these gambles. And I don't want people to think that that's what investing is all about. Also, um, a lot of people think that what I give is advice and i actually never give advice i just give you my viewpoint on what i think about certain stocks or certain trades so i don't want you guys to confuse any of this information for um, any suggestions or advice because that's not what i'm here to do and i never tell people buy this stock right now don't buy this stock or whatever I, i'll say that i don't plan on buying this stock or i wouldn't buy this stock but i would never tell people what to do with their money it's your money and and you have the right to do what you want with it so first and foremost the company right now that plans to merge with golden nugget online gaming is lca and this is a company with a market cap again of 500 million dollars so this merger is supposed to take place in q3 of 2020 so this year i'm not sure if there's an exact date yet for when they plan to merge. So the ticker symbol after they merge will be G-N-O-N. -N. So essentially what will happen is, is LCA is a blank check company. So really they just have a whole bunch of money on their balance sheet and they're looking to merge with the company, bring them on board, help them out financially to do what they, what they wanna do as a company. As we look into Golden Nuggets balance sheet already, we can see that in 2019, they already reported sales of $55 million um okay i put this in the wrong spot this should go down here and then net income came in at 11 million dollars which is 20 percent margins of their sales which isn't terrible it's good to see that they are profitable and they did report a profit in 2019 we'll have to see what they report in 2020 but having their pe ratio being um 11 i mean having their profits be 11 million dollars and the market cap of the blank check company currently being $517. If we were to do a PE ratio on this, this would give the, the potential new stock a PE ratio of a 47X buying at the current price that it's at right now, which I believe is $13, $12. Yeah, so $13 a share. And estimated revenues for 2020 for this new company will are estimated to be $122 million. And that's revenue that's not net income, um, which would give the company a price to sales ratio. And how we find that what a price to sales ratio is, is you take the market cap of a company and you divide that by their actual revenue. So you see, OK, so how many dollars of revenue am I getting for every share that I buy? And you're getting four dollars of revenue for every one share that you buy with this company, uh, which isn't bad since the company's trading at thirteen dollars a share. That means about one third of that stock is, is pure sales, which is good. Um, it's not a bad price to sales ratio as of 2021, but as of right now, did I not write down their current price to sales ratio? I guess not, but we can do that real quick. So if we take 517 and divide it by 55, then we got the current price to sales ratio of a 9.4 so 9.4 x price to sales ratio and as you guys know i like to buy stocks that have a price to sales ratio of between a 5 to 10 if it can be below a 10 that'd be even better because really 10 is a little bit pricey for me and i'm a cheapskate we have a current price to sales ratio of a 10 which isn't horrible um estimated Price to sales ratio in 2021 for the current price you're buying the stock at 4.2x price to sales ratio 
And then in 2025, the revenue is expected to completely blow up in almost 6x to 635 million, which would give them a current future price to sales ratio of a 0.8. So even less than a 1x price to sales ratio, which is an absolute steal. But yet again, you guys will have to hold the stock until 2025. And these are estimated revenues, guys. Don't confuse this for these are solid. This is written in stone. This is what they're going to produce in sales. These are just projections by either analysts or people on the inside that believe that um, Golden Nugget can hit these sort of revenues. And they might exceed these revenues, and they also might completely disappoint on estimates. But also in 2025, net income is estimated to come out to um, $127 million. Now that's a huge up from current net income of only $11 million, but yet again, this is five years out into the future. 127 million is what they're pro projected to produce in net income, which would, um, and I'm just adjusting this by uh, the same 20% margins that they have right now. So I just projected out um, and and multiplied their sales by 20% uh, margins, which would give them a current a forward PE ratio <laughs> all the way um, in 2025 of a four times um, forward PE ratio which is pretty brilliant but again you have to wait until 2025 to see that and who knows if their net income will even hit that pretty much what i'm saying is if you guys are long term on this stock i don't see a whole lot of risk in this um, besides a few points that i want to make in something that i think is crucial when you're looking into some stocks so first and foremost what's proprietary about golden nugget and so far i haven't found anything Yet again, I haven't looked too deep into it, but I'm just thinking like, man, there's DraftKings out there, there's FanDuel's out there, there's so many opportunities for anyone else to get involved in online gaming. Golden Nugget pretty much wants to start uh, sports betting, but for online gaming. And I don't really see companies like DraftKings and FanDuel passing up the opportunity to also take a slice of that pie. And those are companies that already have established fan bases. I know I use FanDuel, I know uh, DraftKings is pretty pretty popular. But also, what is their moat? What's what's special about uh, this company? What's their competitive advantage? And I don't really see anything besides them just being the first to the game to want to do something like this. And right now, I understand there's a lot of hype because the merger news and the whole world's talking about these SPAC stocks, which are special uh, acquisition companies. So that's what's going on right now. And also, I don't know if you guys have heard about Twitch. But there's already a whole lot of donations going on with Twitch and people just streaming content. And uh, Twitch has these things called Twitch Bits, which is pretty much like uh, just donating money, but Twitch calls it Bits. So I'm like, is the industry already here and we're just all ignoring it right now? And if you guys don't know, Amazon owns Twitch. So if you want to get a piece of that Twitch pie, you've got to own uh, shares of Amazon, which are pretty unreachable right now for, for the average investor. But I'm wondering... Is the future of sports betting or online betting already here? And is Twitch going to own that platform? Because they're the most dominant online video game streamer out there. Like, hands down, they're the most dominant one. So, uh, those are my two cents on the company. I don't think there's anything special about it. I do think that you can make your money back if you do buy into this opportunity. But I'm not telling anybody what to do with their money. I know I'm going to stay out of this just because this is not my area of expertise. But I think gaming will be the biggest sport in 10 years. Yeah, it's just a matter of who will be the biggest um, betting platform. And I actually think it might be Twitch just because they already have the foothold. They have the users. They're known for their gaming. And they, they have close ties with the esports communities. So those are my thoughts on the LCA and Golden Nugget merger. Potentially look into Zillow. I've actually never looked into Zillow, so that's a good opportunity for me to look into it. Alright, so Zillow Group. This is a company with a $17 billion market cap. Now, can we justify this market cap? Let's take a look. So far, it's not looking so hot. They have a negative EPS of a loss of $1.96 a share. So, for every share that you buy of this company, you're actually losing $2 right off the bat just because they're losing money as a company. They're not profitable yet. I'd like to take a look at their revenues and EPS statements. On earnings, for the past four quarters, they have been beating, but they do have a huge challenge up ahead of them during COVID time. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here. I know in my state of Colorado, classes have just 
Our houses have just been flying off the lots. It's just so many. It's it's definitely a seller's market right now because people can price their house at just extremely high prices and they've been selling all over my area. So it's been difficult to find a good property to buy lately. So I know the real estate market is not suffering a whole lot due to COVID, but has COVID had any sort of other negative implement, uh, uh effects on the rest of the United States housing market. We'll take a look at revenue and earnings. Revenue has just been on an absolute tear back in 2019. We'll have to see. I'm going to take a look at their um, balance sheet later and see what their revenue is for the trailing 12 months and see if they're on pace to beating this. Net income has been lagging. I'm assuming they're definitely pumping a lot of those profits into um, or a lot of sales into research and development and figuring out how to be the the top tool for any real estate agent to use or if they can even leapfrog real estate agents in the future and Zillow will end up being the ultimate realtor that you can use so here's Zillow not profitable yet but revenues are growing strong okay so they have a current price to sales ratio of a 4.48 which actually is not bad at all this is a lower price to sales ratio than you're gonna get if you were to buy a Facebook or an Apple so this is actually pretty decent and the fact that they're not profitable right now really doesn't bother me a whole lot because I'm pretty pro real estate and I think anybody that's an experienced investor is as you guys know real estate is one of the most uh, insured markets out there it goes up in an on an average of 7% a year property values do in the United States so it's a pretty secure market people are always gonna need a place to live people will always be trading real estate in and out there's a quote that says you can always make more money but God's not making any more land so as more people come onto this planet and there's a more a greater demand for real estate and if you can own land then um, you're owning something that cannot be replicated unless of course we go to Mars like Elon wants us to do a 4.4 price to sales ratio is actually pretty beautiful and if you're in the stock for the long term it wouldn't bother me knowing that uh, the company is not profitable at the moment so income statement total revenue so last year 2019 as we saw they reported 2.7 billion dollars in revenue and this year they're projected to do wait let me just make sure I have my, my numbers right okay that is in the billions okay great <laughs> and in the trailing 12 months they produce 3.5 billion dollars in revenue so I think it's safe to say that they are gonna beat what they produced last year in revenue which is great because um, 20, 2020 has not been the best year, especially with COVID and everything, but it's great to see that real estate is surviving well, and it looks like Zillow is just staying very strong during all of this. Losses have been a little spotty. Year end 2016, they lost $220 million. The following year, they only lost shy of just $100 million. Following year, they lost around $120 million. and last year in 2019, they lost... 305 million dollars they are on pace to beat that again this year who knows maybe with uh, playing all paying all these furloughed employees um, finding how to keep the business alive during all of this of course it's gonna bleed money so they're not the only company that's losing money right now so that's okay like I said it's a long-term play with Zillow they're a new dog in the whole real estate industry total cash on hand I think this is beautiful what did we say their market cap was 17 billion so they've got $2.4 billion just cash on hand, which is great for a company as small as Zillow. I know we're talking $17 billion of market cap, but they are a smaller company, um, especially since they're a technology company. So total cash, $2.4 billion. Total current assets comes in at $3.5 billion. A majority of that is made up of cash, which I really like. And total assets comes in at $6 billion. Great. Um, again, this is in uh, in property. This is in technology. This is assets are anything and everything that makes you money and also maintains value or grows in value. And liabilities, however, are debts or vehicles or anything that diminishes in value or is losing you value over a period of time. So, total current liabilities is even under a billion dollars right there. So just that 920 million dollars and total liabilities which is total long-term debt all sorts of things that are losing the company money comes in at 2.69 so 2.7 billion dollars and if we compare that to their total assets so 6.1 and we divide this by 2 
six nine and we have an asset to debt ratio of a 2.26 as I've told you guys before I believe anything above a one times asset to debt ratio is a healthy ratio for a company anything above a two is really great and you can sleep easy at night knowing that your company can pay off all its liabilities and still have twice as much cash as they have liability or twice as many assets as they have a liability so that's great to know anything above a three is just phenomenal and that's a super strong company right there but Zillow having a 2.26 asset to debt ratio you can't knock that that is just beautiful okay and they do have 3.4 uh, billion dollars of equity in the company which is phenomenal you don't see a whole lot of companies nowadays with a whole lot of equity because a lot of companies have been selling their shares to raise funds so that's a loss of equity on the company summing things up for Zillow I think this is a solid company for the future um, they've got a great price to sales ratio they're not profitable just yet but like I said if you guys are in this stock for the long term then I would be sitting pretty knowing that I'm getting the stock at a pretty reasonable value right now and once they do start producing profits then I'll start reaping some rewards there but this is this is a solid company so like I told you guys I was gonna look into Ulta stock and what I think about them so I've talked about Ulta stock a lot on my Instagram and I've made a lot of videos on them on my TikTok on Instagram and this is a stock that I get a lot of questions on because they trade super fluidly to put it at the least, they'll be at 220 one day and then the next day they're under $200 and now they're back at 225 So let's take a look at this company. Market cap of $12.7 billion and they are profitable. They have a PE ratio of uh, 7.5 which means that for every share you buy of this company you're getting $7.57 of earnings in that share price that you're buying. So PE ratio is around a 29 but that's because analysts are saying that the companies aren't going to be producing a whole lot of profits so the company is trading really rich right now but as we've seen many companies have been reporting uh, beats on earnings so uh, you shouldn't take high PE ratios too close to heart right now just because nobody has any idea as to what kind of profits a company will be producing and just because they reported really crappy profits this previous quarter doesn't mean that's the trend for the company for the long term I believe once COVID-19 is all over and done with will return to a, a, a more prosperous future earnings have been here and there but as we can see I mean yeah so earnings estimates they've been beating uh, <laughs> they clearly lost big during COVID right here they're not doing so hot with all the physical stores being closed down I know that they are doing better on their online division but still physical stores make up a huge bulk of Ulta's sales and earnings so we'll have to see on August 27th when they report earnings again how business is doing now that stores are slowly starting to open up again. So as we can see over the past four years we've seen just absolute monster growth in revenue and in earnings. I believe revenue they've been growing at a rate of 11% a year, 11 to 12% a year which is just really great for a big box of a brick and mortar store like Ulta because a lot of people confuse them for retail and they're not. They're really more in the experience sector where people can go into the store and try on a product and that's something that you can't do on Amazon.com. You can't do that with AR filters the same way that you can do with physical makeup or physical hair products and stuff like that. So it's an experience for people to go into Ulta stores and that's why Ulta does so well in the brick and mortar industry where it seems like Amazon is dominating every industry. So yeah, like I said, P.E. ratios aren't too important nowadays, especially with the forward P.E. ratio. Analysts have no idea what to predict for profits in the future. And the current P.E. doesn't matter a whole lot because the company's just bleeding money right now trying to survive during COVID. Financials, I want to take a look at the income statement and show you guys why I'm still invested in Ulta and why I believe in them for the future. You guys remember this is a company with a $12 billion market cap? Just last year, they did sales of $7.4 billion. So if we were to do a price to, to sales ratio on that, price to sales, yeah. So they're trading at a price to sales ratio of a 1.72. Price to sales ratio of below a 5, which is what I like to buy companies at, anything between a 5 to 10. And if it's below a 5, then that's just juicy. That's, that's gold right there, so long as the company's not going to go bankrupt or anything like that. But... If you're getting this stock at this value right now, then it's hard to complain with that. 
you just have to hold on to it and wait for the gains to flourish again. Okay, so total revenue uh, for the trailing 12 months, but I'm assuming, so it's looking like Ulta is going to come right in line with the same sort of sales that they produced last year. If they're lucky, they might come in a little bit below that. They might beat it by just a little bit, but pretty much year over year, they're going to be in line. Not a whole lot of change right there. Net income. I'm assuming it's going to be really bloody for Ulta. Trailing 12 months is around 700 million, which is around right in line with last year, but they still have a couple more quarters to uh, announce. So we'll have to see if they end up beating. Uh, because remember, in trailing 12 months, some of the quarters from last year, a couple of them, are incorporated in this net income figure. So this could end up being a. This could stay at 700 million. 700 million or it could go down to 300 million once you take away the months from last year and add the new months from this year. So this could be really bloody for Ulta. And I'm gonna show you guys why I think Ulta is a really strong company and why I don't have any worries of them going bankrupt anytime soon. So total cash on hand, they have about half a billion dollars right there. And then total current assets comes in at $2 billion and total assets comes in at about $5 billion. So they have a market cap of 12 billion and 5 billion of that is straight up assets which is great and then total liabilities comes in at 3 billion dollars which again is uh, an asset to debt ratio of above a 1. I don't think it's quite a 2 yet. So there's there's no other way to put this. This is a rough year for Ulta but again they have the assets to pay for all their liabilities that they have right now and they still have uh, more assets to survive. And I believe that Ulta will be back during the, the holiday season in a big way because so many people want to celebrate Christmas, give each other gifts, and the makeup industry has always been um, a strong point of purchase for a lot of people. Ulta stock at $225 a share. If I wasn't already invested in Ulta, uh, then I wouldn't think this is such a horrible buy price for the company. Like I said, you do have to wait a couple years, maybe even five years to see a big return on investment with the recovery of COVID and everything like that and then returning to uh, more prosperous times with profitability but this is a company that I was buying back at $250 a share just last year because I believed in them so much and I thought that was a steal and I got the chance to buy into the stock at $157 a share back in March and so that has paid off generously as well so those are my thoughts on ulta stock thank you for watching if you have any questions be sure to join my discord group because i only answer questions that are asked in my discord group so be sure to click the link in my description to join my discord group today